one of these mysterious variables I speak of within Train Controller. In this video, we're going to deep dive into how I use them on the Fallen Rod Railway using Train Controller Gold. Let's get going. Up and running is MRT scale print. So if you want Craftsman quality 3D printed prints, email me below. let's deep dive into what these variables are all about so I need to give a little bit of a, a background to to my train controller switchboard now this is the one of the main switchboards on the full and log railway so we we use for my operations is I use the the add-on called smart hand now you'll see that this one which I call the Western and Northern divisions so it's orientation with true West and true North as it sits in my train room it's just the way I did it um, you'll see that they are quite comprehensive type looking boards, but you'll probably agree if you're going to run operations with this where you just need um, a shunting area, say the Barham Station here is one of my main shunting areas, it's probably just a little bit too much of clutter I think for an operator to deal with because they don't need to worry about what's going on in the yard or what's in lower mission. So what we did, we moved forward regarding making some what I call soft panels um, and soft local panels within train control and I'll show you quickly what those are all about. So this is uh, the Barham station local panel. So just we'll just quickly dive back. So this is this area here on the top left of the screen. Train controller doesn't like having two of the same contact indicators. So what we ended up doing is making, but we needed a way of tracking trains within train controller in onto these panels. So what we needed, what we found we needed, we still needed some pertinent information to be on the switchboard. For example, names of the blocks and the trains and that of the locos. I'll give you a little brief rundown what variable. So as you know, we define names in the general tab of train controller. So I'll just bring one of them up quickly. It doesn't matter which one it is, the general tab. So it doesn't matter what aspect or what object we're looking at. We actually, we name everything within train controller so it's easier to fault find and navigate our way around the, the software. But unfortunately the software does not allow us to access this information what they call dynamically. So for some reason perhaps maybe to avoid the danger that we might set up the same name of two different objects then how then the issue with that is as I sort of talked about before how would then train controller distinguish between them so to avoid this problem I'm assuming that's why Mr. Freewold um, does not let us access these dynamically however there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel uh, TC allows us basically to manipulate the references to the objects but as discussed not their names so what we had to do so this is not all my doing so this is another gentleman I've been working with and big shout out to him he doesn't like to be identified but he knows who he is um so we described uh, sorry we worked together and constructed a parallel system working with the names within train controller how he has put it train controller does the referencing of the name so as we spoke about before on the general tabs but we do the actual names and i'll show you how that comes about very shortly so at this point it's probably pertinent to sort of go back and dive into a little bit regarding some background of the control system within train control on how I run it. So each train on my layout has one train controller car pulled by a train controller engine. So what I mean by that is I'll just quickly go up to the engine and trains tab. So we've got train controller wagon. I'm sorry, I'll go into something that was actually a wagon. Train controller wagon, control controller engine. This convention started for what we call our shunted freight trains. So train controller is very, very good at automatic trains running trains around a layout with very very lim limited human interaction but we wanted to go one step further we still wanted to have what I'm calling that bridge traffic but we also wanted to have what we call shunted trains so that's where my operation so that's a train going from point A to point B to C and then shunting some uh, stations in between. So the shunted freight uh, as the name suggests are trains that are, have real wagons that are shunted or switched depending on which part of the world you're in on the layout during an operation session the TC car is used to cover and protect the set of wagons that belong to the physical train. We found this protection is obviously required because obviously we've got automatic trains running in between all this. Now the protection is required as my real cars don't have resistor wheel sets. So as discussed, so in TC a train on the layout is a car coupled to an engine, a train set, what we call a train set within train controller. So as we spoke about before, this is a train set here. So we obviously had to set up a naming convention. So our naming convention needed to be different 
to save the confusion. So we use the train corresponding to car and loco corresponding to engine. So by virtue of the name, it's very similar to it, but we're using a different terminologies just to, so it, it avoids the confusion. So the train is named by the car. So each location within my operation system, so barroom is a location. So as I said, the, the train is named by the car, barroom one or barroom two, so that means a, only that wagon set or that particular TC wagon can go to bar. So each one of my locos descriptions has the type of loco and also has in the in the square brackets uh, another number which normally corresponds to the uh, the digital DCC address. So schedules within the Fallen Log Railway have conditions on them that they can only work with one type of train controller car regardless of what engine is attached. So I've got a group of engines that sit in the turntable area, which is obviously off to my Belair yard. Train controller decides which engine's gonna go to that, that wagon set, but only that type of wagon, as discussed before, can be can end up going and start the schedule towards, say, we'll say Barham, because that's sort of what we're talking about here. So the cars within train controller, we sort of affectionately call them virtual cars because obviously they're in the virtual world that they don't ex exist as such um, but they're grouped into train groups such as bar and one and bar and two as discussed so now let's uh, start drilling down to the variable side of things so as discussed before train control allows us to manipulate the references to the object just not their physical names so in tc9 variables were introduced and there are four types of variables the simple ones are numbers text time and the fourth is the object an object variable is defined to be used of a particular object type so an indicator on and off switch a signal and so on and so forth all of which occur in the tools menu a defined object variable can be set to any object of its own type by selecting from a list of such objects so once set it can be used in an operations list to switch that object to another state e.g on and off, red or green, trigger it, and also add conditions to it to check whether that object is in a particular state or even whether it is a particular object. So that's obviously rather technical talk there. So I will start stepping through exactly how these variables are constructed. So every train, loco, block has its own variable set to its own names. And every train has two global variables, a bar and one block and a bar and one loco. And it detects which block it's in because obviously we, we got an issue regarding because we're not using the block set up as they normally are where a train a train control will track the given train around as I spoke of before I want to know what train is in what block or locomotive or even wagon set so how do we get into to variables so like TC there's a myriad of ways of doing it but the way I look at doing it is so I go to New Explorer tab, we'll open that right up. And then down the left hand side here, you can see there's all, all sorts of objects, indicators, everything that is pertinent to you or pertaining to your, your layout. So second and bottom here, it's all in alphabetical law is my variable. So you can see how many variables are set up. So don't be put off by how many it is. It's like any other system within train controller, you, you build, you build, you build to, to each block on the like. So what we'll try and do, we'll try, we'll, talk about the ones that are pertinent to that particular soft control panel that I was talking about before. So let's try to we'll find train in BS3. So that's the third third track from the front on the Barham station. So this is how we're, this is obviously what it looks like when you set up the variable. So it's all just free text, it's an assignment and the operation is obviously text as we spoke about because it's something text based that we want to show up. How do you start a new variable? It's up to new object, down to variable, click on OK and as you can see it brings up that. So that's no different from that and then it's just a matter of as we spoke through the four different types, the number, the text, the time and the object and obviously the scope. So we'll, we'll touch on the, the different scopes um, a little bit further on in this video. But this particular text variable is global. So the next variable we looked at doing is train name. So this is, I'll just quickly go through this and I'll step you through 
each of the variables and then how they link in with each other to do what we're trying to achieve here. So train name, so as you can see this one, of the variable's called, it's a text variable, it's called the train name, but the, the scope is train on this one. So as before, go into new object variable and then you give it a name, which would be train name, defaults, you go to text, and then it's not a global one because you want it specifically the scope going to that individual into a train, not, not globally being able to use it. So the issue we had was we, we had a problem that we had to give um, give a name to the cars or an engine because in TC both are called vehicles or trains. So we had to give each car and engine two text variables, one called the train name as we sort of spoke about and the other one called the loco name with both the scope set to train. So I just showed you how to set the scope on it. So how do we, do we set these up? So they can be set up in the context of a train. So the easiest way we found to access these is via a function within train controller, so an engine function. So each of these functions we've, we've created is called set train name and or set loco name to be set to the appropriate train variable. So the other variable we look at doing is block name because we want the, the train to be tracked um, or linked to the, a particular block. So as before, they're all set from the same location. Variables and depending on what block you are using. So block name. So the only important one here is the scope, which is obviously set to block. So it's only going to look for the block. So the next uh, variable we're going to look at is, I'll go to, there's, there's a rail car set that runs into my into my barroom station. So we need to define them within a variable. So we got rail car one block and also rail, rail car one loco. So they're all in here alphabetically and they're made exactly the same. I'll just quickly go and find one of them. I'll go and find rail car one block. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll go and find you rail car one loco. So this is it here. So specified under the name, we call it rail car one loco. The operation is assignment obviously text and that is it there so what we also need to look at doing is setting up a macro so how do we access the macro side of things so there's a few different ways you can either go via the edit tab macros or you can go via the Explorer so we'll just so what does this macro do it sends the train function current block so that train functions get sent to the current block to the train entering the block and basically turns it on or off or pauses it which then in turn sets the global variable so an example of that would be barum one block equals text variable block name so that becomes all very apparent once we get out into um, onto the switchboards or the soft panels and how we put those text variables in there. What we need to do is send block name. I'll go and show you quickly how that's done. So there's nothing in the op conditions tab. So it's just a matter of going into train operations, current block, slight delay, current block. So what we need to look at doing is making those functions that we spoke about before. So set loco name and set train name. So how do we do that? So you've got a functions library that you can set up and set up your own icons effectively. So we're still in edit mode, functions library under the trains tab. But the ones we're looking at is set loco name, set train name. All right. So it's just a matter of you go, you go that, you go new, you can import and export icons so you can go into that so I was talking about edited images so it's all sort of dot matrix type thing so he's gone that's how we've how I've physically gone in and made that is purely just like that I nearly forgot this little guy so also we need to add the third function which is current block so that's just a, exactly the same process push new you can then rename to whatever you want you can change the icon as we've already spoken about then okay out of it and then that will set that new function so that'll become apparent when we go across into the macros and link that to this particular function So we're in the engine and functions tab again in edit mode. So we're going to go dive into the specific locomotive and wagon set. So 
So we've gone in, we've added the, the functions. So we're gonna add the current block. So it's just a matter of going new, because obviously we added it, you go into the function, you add the current block, and you go from there. So I won't get rid of that. So how do we, what do we then do to it? So as with other functions within Train Controller, you can add, this is a list, but if you add decoder, it's like when you got your physical functions, S1, F2, and so, so on, so first, turn your lights on, your sound and the like. But we don't want to do that. We want a, a list of operations we want to happen in the background. So we'll go to the list tab and I'll show you what, what we look at. So in the operations tab, there's no conditions. So we just do the operations tab. So how do we find where the, the variable is accessed? So you may, when you come in, it'll come in on system operations, go to flow operations, access variable and you add it. So then we're going into change. And what, what we want to do is we want to, because we're going rail car one block. So the current block is, it's, it's wanting to tell us which the current block is that rail car number one is in. And that'll feed back to the system. So it's just a matter of finding those variables that you made earlier. And there it is there. I won't go and add it. That's what we do. So you then go and add. Then after that, no, I will go and add it just quickly. So I've got to start a new variable. So you'll go into rail car one block and the operation will be assignment because you're assigning it to that. And it's going to be a variable because we want to go and access another variable. We want to access what block name it's going to go into. So it's just a matter of going finding that and then go. So that's exactly the same as that bottom one. So that's how you roughly do it. So it's obviously very important you set up all your variables first before you start diving into this bit. So we'll just remove that quickly. So the next one we're going to look at doing is set the train name. That's also a list, so we can list um, the operations. Still no, no conditions there, as you can see. So you access it flow control again. Same thing is access to variables. This time is obviously, as the name suggests, train name. And this time we want to set it as railcar. So you, you specify the variable you want, which is the train name one, which is an assignment, it's text. And this is where you physically write in rail car one so that's what's going to come up in the the, the, the global text when you set it on your uh, control panel which i'll show you later and the last one is uh, get loco name which is same thing it's you just add your list so you can access the operations tab no conditions on this one either go via the flow control this time we set we select rail car one loco and then the text variable loco name. So that will then feed the loco name into your your text variable, uh, sorry, your, your general text later on. All right, so now we need to start looking at what we need to do within the block. Because within train control, there's no way to get the context of the block except by using an indicator. So what we mean by that. So what we use, we use an occupied flagman to set the block name. So what I probably needed to, to add, and this is what, it can take a bit of time, but once you sort of get the process going, it um, doesn't take all that much time. So each variable's to work on, depending on how in depth and how much information you want coming back to the system via the variable, is you need a, to, create a text variable for each block the train's going to transverse through so if you just want it in a destination block um, start block and a destination block that's all you put okay so we insert the flagman into there and this is obviously the gone through the trigger train in so we we call up we add access to variable train in bs3 it's an assignment variable and then we want the train name so we then add the value of the train name and then you create it and also we look at, in the operations tab, go on the block name BS3, so that's what we're gonna call it. So this is where we're going, we're starting to manipulate names within train controller, so we can use them elsewhere out on the switchboards. So we've got the block name variable that we've set up earlier, and this is where each individual block. So BS3, you do one for BS4, and so forth and so on, depending on the name of the block. And then obviously, the macro that we set up before, uh, send block name to train. That's all the only variables you need, but we've gone one step further where we've gone into an each individual block that the rail car will go through. Where that becomes relevant for us is we use this quite predominantly with a central control panel. So this is gonna be form part of my remote or virtual operations that this is every schedule, or sorry, every train 
transverses the Fallen Log Railway can be started from this location um, as a, a dispatch panel. So where those each individual block becomes relevant is down here. So you can look at any given time to find out where on the layout this that given wagon set is. So in this case, I know Barham One is in Belair Yard Track Four. So what I'll quickly do, I'll just quickly go out of edit mode, and if I was just to put just to drag and drop that into BY5. And now you can see that it's changed to BY5. So you can imagine as you go through all your blocks, this updates in real time. As you can appreciate, this system did take a little time to set up, but it's just giving you some sort of idea of the power of, of the system. Okay, so now we're going to look at how all this ties together so we can see visually on our control panels or our switchboards I should say how this all works. So we'll go to to the barroom local panel and I'll just physically move trains around. So we're just going to move this rail car to into BS3. We won't run it, we'll just put it plonk it there. So then I'll go back over to the Barham local panel and you'll see we've set up, I now know that this block is now occupied, BS3, and Railcar 2 is currently in it. So how have we, how do we get this text up? So what we need to do is, we're in edit mode, is, so it's just a text element. So the code that you put in is percentage sign, capital V, and that'll automatically come up with the two boxes, and I'll show you what you do then. So we'll put it just down here. So what we need to then do is, all we need to do is go up to this little icon, the ABC. If it's not up on there, it's gonna be in under probably your tool section here. It'll be in under your tool section. Text, and then all right, so we've got the text block. So then, normally what you can do with a text block, you can just type ABC or whatever, and then it'll come out as text down here. But we don't want to do that. We want to add the variable to it. So as I said before, so what do you want to do? So you want to go percentage time, capital V, and then you can see it automatically puts the square bracket around with a, um, a question mark in it. So how do we then add the the, um, the variable to that? So what we want for this one is train, because this is the train set in BS3. So it's just a matter of clicking, and then as you can see, and then it comes out, because it's accessing the variables you've set up. It's just a matter of then going finding whatever one you want. So we want train in BS3. You'll see it's rail car two, same as there. So if I then say I wanted to add um, something else, it's just a matter of scrolling through. So train in BY4, which I know is a Barham outbound freight, and that'll show you the Barham run train that's in there. So that's how you access start accessing that data. We've gone one step further regarding the, how we use these variables. Now we set up the, the loco variable, the loco name before. So how these, why, why these control panels are being constructed is a local operator can set their train going to, to and from Barham Station with a click of a button at a remote location so physically at the layout where this is located in within the layout room the issue with obviously the the yard is all well not the issue but how my layout is set up for operations all trains come and come and go from the, the yard in some shape or form so as I said this by4 train is the train outbound that for the next operating session so I now know 
that that is the location, so that's the HH locomotive, the, the O10O, is waiting, ready and waiting for the next operating session to be going here. How do we do that one? So same as before, it's a um, little text box, you add the, the V and then you go Barham 1 locomotive. So what? So how that comes about is when Barham 1 wagon set is coupled up with a locomotive, it talks back to the system and sets the variable as what the train name you've given it. So the train name, as obviously we established before, is 824, so that will be the address. HH is the class. Wheel configuration, it's a green one, because obviously there's various versions of this, um, and you can put as much information on as little as you want. So that information's handy because there's actually a view block between where the yard is, where that BY4 is, and the physical location that Barham is, so that the operator won't be able to see it. Why we've done that is, is because when they run manual schedules, um, M over here is for manual. That's how I set up my my schedules, either manual or automatic. They can then set that train correctly with their controller, their physical hand controller, and they can start running that train towards Barham. So let's see how this all links together on my full on railway. So let's just quickly go to my central control panel where I start all my schedules from. So we're just going to start rail car one and rail car two. So let's go to the bar and local panel. So you'll see this is where it is. So we've got the first variable that we set up, the rail car two, and it's transversing through to this next block. So you'll see in BS3 here is where rail car one is sitting and the route has now been set. The red hen is now on its way, as you can see down here on the soft soft control panel. And very shortly as it transverses its way, its way through, it'll, it'll pop up. So now you'll see rail car one is now here, rail car two is now up there. So let's now add the new dimension to this. So now I'm gonna add a freight train. So for, so for the interest of keeping this video as short as I can, I've bought the train would normally start in Belair Yard, but now I've bought it right over here. So we've got Barham 1, rail car 2 in behind it, and the rail car 1 is currently sitting up here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set that schedule going. Um, this is on a manual schedule. So you can see the route has been set for it. What we can now do is I'm gonna go back over quickly to the central control panel, I'll set these rail cars going, go back to the barham, and then we're just going to set this this locomotive going forward. And obviously we're in, sorry, we're still in simulator mode. And so what's happening is train coming up BS3 rail car one obviously needs this slip switch here. So once that clears, that lock clears out, you'll see rail car one will get going. Now rail car number two has set going behind because its block is now clear. And now rail car one is on its journey. So rail car two will sit in this block here because it too needs this, this slip switch to get into to BS3. So you can sort of see how all the, the variables are giving us information on the switchboard on this, this local panel we're calling it, right from what locomotive you need to dial up into your remote here. These rail car one, rail car twos, they're automatic schedules, but you can sort of see how they toggle through, but it's telling me at a, at a glance which, which train set and engine are on what schedule and what route. This is all done with variables. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, please comment below if there's any questions, I'll endeavor to answer them for you. I'll probably jump into another variables video in the near future, which is probably is a little more in depth than this one and how we used it to change our KD shuffle or our KD dance object variables that way. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon, like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Technique.